Hi, my name is Kirk Hamilton and this is the Staying Healthy Today Show. And I wanted to share with you a principle that's in my book, uh, Staying Healthy in the Fast Lane. But also it's probably the most important principle really in all of nutrition and it's the reason why we have a healthcare crisis not only in our country but the world. And the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, has done a really cool thing. They followed dietary patterns from 1908 or excuse me, 1909 to the present time. So I'm going to show you five or six graphs that are going to show you the dietary patterns that are going to tell you why we are sick in this country with heart disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and I just want to have you get a visual. And if you want, you can go into a little further detail on my book. So the, and these were made up by the USDA for me, and they're in chapter one of my book. So right here, what you see is calorie consumption from 1909 to 2008 in the United States. And you can see calorie consumption is going up. It's about 500 calories more than it was in 1908. The reason for that is, here is 1909 through 2008, and this is total meat consumption. Red meat has gone up and down. Poultry has gone up. Fish has kind of stayed the same. But in totality, meat consumption has gone up. Meat is a calorie-dense food, and especially factory farm animals are even more uh, calorie dense than, than wild game. So this is a reason why we have excess calories. And we're consuming about 75 more pounds of meat than we were back in 1909 than we are today. But it's mostly from poultry, not so much from red meat. The other dietary pattern that is critical is fats and oil consumptions have increased. Now fats and oil, remember, these are added to the food. These aren't part of the whole food. So this is just a processed food. And fats and oils are nine calories per gram. They're two and a half times the calories as a carbohydrate or a protein. So these are just thrown into our foods. So as you can see, the graph goes up. This is another reason why we have excess calories and an obesity issue. The next one is calorie sweeteners, or basically sugars. And the top line is the sum of corn sweeteners and refined sugars. So originally, table sugar, which was sucrose, was up here. It's gone down a bit, and corn sweeteners, as you well know, high fructose corn syrup has gone up. But the, the sum of them both still are significantly elevated over the last century. And again, this is strictly from processed foods. If we eat whole foods from the outside of a grocery store or out of our vegetable garden, we don't get these. The next is my, one of my pet peeves, cheese consumption. As you can see, starting about the 1960s and 70s, it skyrockets. And when I was a young man, you had to ask the cheese to put on their sour cream to put on your food. Now, you have to, it's the reverse. This is a very calorie dense food. It also causes a lot of food intolerance. So this is another thing that you can eliminate to reduce your excess calories. Now, many people are carb phobic. They think that we eat too much grain. In, in part they're right and in part they're wrong. If you look here, 300 pounds per person at the beginning of the, the century in 1909, and now in 2008, it's about 200 pounds per person. We've actually gone down in our total grains. And this happens to every industrialized country that starts eating processed foods. But the problem is, these grains here are mostly refined grains. And if you look here at this slide, okay, if these were all whole grains, meaning they have the fiber and the germ to them to add bulk and nutrients, we'd be okay. But these are processed grains, or the white flour products. And these processed grains don't come alone. They come with the sugar and the fat that we saw. And lastly, I'd like to close, but this kind of gives a synopsis of what we call the standard American diet, or the SAD diet. And, as you, and we call it SAD for a reason, because it leads to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, etc. 63% of the food we eat is processed foods, with a lot of added fats, oils, and sugars, just like I showed you. 25% are animal foods. Now these are very high in calories and saturated fat. Now I happen to be a vegan, I don't eat animal foods, but if you're going to eat animal foods, you want to eat lean animal foods in small amounts. Free range animals would be much better because their fat profile is, is related to the, the grass and the good type of greens that they eat. But we want to cut down or eliminate animal foods. Over here is plant food. Now plant food should be about 85% of the total intake or more. The problem is even half of the plant food is processed. Okay, a potato, a french fry, that gets thrown in the plant food. So what we want to do is at least make this all plant food and cut down on this. 
And that, my friends, is really the problem with the Western diet. And these same dietary habits are happening in China, India, and they're increasing their risk and increasing their incidence of obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, etc. So we reverse these by one rule. Eat processed foods and eat a lot more plant food. And until next time, stay and be well. And remember, you can get all this. This is chapter one in my book, Staying Healthy in the Fast Lane at Prescription2000.com.